How's that? Yeah, we have a young, not that, not that the other groups are old, but, um, and, and, um, and bluegrass, gospel bluegrass and, uh, and live music and how many, yeah, not everybody's into bluegrass. I've got my, my green grass pants on. You know, but uh, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a great song uh, that uh, before we uh, get rolling here in the Henley concert, this is a great one, Love Lifted Me. And if you're able to stand, we need, and the words, I guess, yeah, the words are right up there on the screen. So um, <clears throat> we'll have you stand. Lori's on the organ, and uh, let's just kind of lift the roof here on this one. Uh, here we go, ready, I was sinking, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted And love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Be all my heart I give ever to him, I'll cling in his blessed presence, live ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs, faithful, loving service to him. Be long and love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Well, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. All right, I need a breather. Just take a minute. You know, we're just not talking about like loves between a husband and a wife, or a mom and a daughter, or a father and a son. Or we're, we're talking about a supernatural love when we sing this hymn. And uh, sometimes life gets a little rough and hard, and, um, and there aren't any answers. Well, it's miraculous, <clears throat> but when you know the Lord Jesus, it, it, we are reminded that God's love is poured into us, his, his love. Not your love, his love is poured right into the Christ one, the Christian and that's a tremendous, enabling, powerful influence in our daily walk when life has no answers, you know? So I decided to throw that in for free, all right? All right, now that you're rested up, we're going to hold that last uh, love. And you needed to be prepared for this. Some of you are recuperating still, right, Albert? We don't want anybody else having any heart attacks, so just take it easy. But let's try verse 3 and then hang on to this last verse. Here we go. Souls in danger, look above. All right, here we go. Ready? Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be, be saved today. And love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Well, love lifted me. 
lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. We're going to ask Pastor Bobby to come and uh, just lead us in our opening prayer, and then we'll let you folks sit down for a while. All right. But Pastor Bobby, thank you. So just talking about love and the supernatural, unique, divine love of God, it reminded me in my garage <clears throat> it, between the doorway is a little wooden heart, and it has a little story in it. Some of you may have heard this story before, but nevertheless, it says that a little boy once asked to Jesus, Jesus, how much do you love me? He said, watch. And he reached out his arms and died. Father, we thank you for that unique, incredible, divine, holy love of God. We thank you that while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his unique love toward us and died for us. We thank you that the Lord Jesus took upon himself our sin, that he shouldered sin as the great Passover lamb of God and walked the way of sorrows and walked the road, the Via Della Rosa, to Calvary, that great mountain upon which our salvation was bought and paid for with the very blood of God in the flesh, the one who tabernacled amongst us, Jesus of Nazareth, the great I am that I am. We thank you this evening for that great love. And so now we return to you, worship. We return to you, adoration and gratitude and thanksgiving for who you are, for the person of Christ, for what he accomplished upon the accursed tree for us, and that our names are now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But Father, there may be someone here this evening who cannot confidently say, I am a child of God. We pray that the Spirit would move freely, convict them through song, through the word, through the ministry here at Glenridge tonight, the Henley concert, and that they would come to know Jesus as their savior and as their king, repenting of their sin and acknowledging that Jesus is Lord. May everything that happened here this evening be to your glory, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bobby. You may be seated, and uh, just before we introduce you to this delightful group of uh, young folk up here, so a very important announcement, a gray Hyundai, an accent, license number BZMB447. They're stealing it. Oh, no. Sorry. Your lights are on. All right. Aren't you glad they're not stealing it? All right. You know, if you have a Hyundai, an accent. All right. We have, uh, we are so good, uh, good, glad. We are so glad to have a group come back uh, to the Henley again. Canadian group all the way from Millbank, Ontario. Yeah, and, uh, but uh, here they are. And these dear folk, they're called Rescue Junction. Won't you, uh, the rest of you, put your hands together and make Rescue Junction feel right at home. Steps in my heart, be my light when life gets dark. Hold my hand so I'll stand tall on the promises of God. soul. 
Jesus said to him, Fear not, fear not this earthly death. Cause before this day is o'er, you'll be with me in paradise on heaven's golden shore. There were three men on a mountain upon Calvary, and the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for 
the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. He This old world's no place for living, not enough care and not enough giving, sometimes clouds of sin and sorrow hide the way. But this life of stormy weather ain't gonna be my home forever, gonna be moving one of these days. Gonna be moving, gonna be moving, moving away, moving away, gonna be moving, gonna be moving one of these days. Troubles and cares, you're never gonna find me. I'm gonna be moving, gonna be moving one of these days. There won't be no time for crying. No more sickness, toil, or die, and joy awaits me in that land so far away. And when I rest from all of my labor, the Lord's gonna be my next door neighbor, gonna be moving one of these days. Gonna be moving, gonna be moving, moving away, moving away, gonna be moving, gonna be moving one of these days. But I leave this world behind me, troubles and cares are never gonna find me. I'm gonna be moving, gonna be moving one of these days. <laughs> oh my. Well, thank you so much. It is really wonderful to be here with you. On the way down here, we were talking about the fact that it was in March 2020. We were scheduled to be here. And uh, the week leading up to that concert, there was a lot of emails going back and forth between Caitlin and Dave because there was this virus that we'd heard about. And uh, sure enough, it's been since then, now we're here. And we're really glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking in the green room about how we're pretty nervous tonight. We're out, a little out of practice. We haven't had a chance to gig as much. And then uh, during the introduction, Pastor Dave was, I guess the baseline for doing okay here is if you're not in the hospital. <laughs> and uh, it sounds like if we can manage to get out of here tonight without anyone having a heart attack, it'll be a success. Without so <laughs> without putting us in the hospital. Yeah, that would be the other thing. No, this is a real treat. We're really excited. Uh, to be here. We do have the best hobby in the world. Uh, we get to play bluegrass music and we get to travel around and play this incredible music on these wonderful instruments and we get to tell people the wonderful news that God has revealed himself to us through his son Jesus Christ. He's not left us alone. He's not left us the lost. He's, he's, he's come near. He's drawn near. He is with us and he offers hope and life and love to all who call on his name. We get to sing about that, the best hobby in the world for sure. And uh, we came all the way from Millbank to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. We'll introduce the group as we go along tonight, but uh, I'll start with this young lady over here. She does a wonderful job. She plays the rhythm guitar, sings lead vocals and harmony vocals, 
She's an accomplished songwriter, and uh, she writes almost 100% of the music that we perform and record now. She's been recognized by a jury of her peers, the Central Canadian Bluegrass Music Association. I think she's the uh, at least a three-time winner of the Songwriter of the Year Award, but her best claim to fame is that she gets to call herself my little sister. This is Caitlin Gerber. Would you make her feel welcome? Thank you so much. I want to quickly give this gentleman a chance to tune that mandolin. I think he put it right out of key there with some of the whack in there before, but he's a, he's a pastor at our home congregation and he preached this morning. So if you think you're getting out of here tonight without sermon part two <laughs> from this morning, I'm all out. I wouldn't count on it. He's usually, we call him the mouthpiece of the band for very obvious reasons. But uh, he does a great job, uh, not just preaching, but singing and playing that uh, mandolin there. We really appreciate his leadership in the band. Would you make welcome my big brother, Kyle Gerber. <laughs> we'll see what happens on this next song. Okay. For Jericho, a gang of greedy thieves were waiting farther up the road. They took everything he had and left him there for dead on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. assured of a heart in every person and a setting sun on everybody's road from Jerusalem to Jericho or anywhere we may ever go
Thank you very much. Boy, I don't want to speak for Roger, but I think that song took his breath away. All right. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. I want to take a moment and introduce this young man behind me. This is my brother-in-law, and Kyle's brother-in-law for that matter. He is married to our little sister. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard the story, he was hanging around our house. And we had this bass hanging around our house. And we thought, we're going to put this boy to good use. If he's going to be around, we're going to put him to work. And uh, he's still in the band, and he's still with the sisters. So things worked out really well. And he's a great young man. Would you make welcome Dallas Rowe? Thank you. And over here, we call him Dimples, because he hides a beautiful little smile under that beard. This is our uh, little cousin. We really are a family band up here, I guess. This is uh, our younger cousin, not little cousin, and uh, he plays a guitar with a hubcap. It's, that's about as special, I guess, as it is. <laughs> but uh, we really appreciate this young man. He is as versatile as it gets. We can pretty much throw him in anywhere in this group, and he'll fill in for, for any, I think he could fill in for me at this point if I needed to take a night off. But, uh, well, he wouldn't look as good in a dress, but, um, but otherwise, not too bad. We're going to put him to work on the next song. Would you wait, make welcome Nicholas Huber. Thank you. We would like to introduce last but certainly not least our banjo player. He comes originally from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. 
And his dad and his stepmom are here tonight, Cleason and Sherry. Where are you at? Right back there. Would you make them feel welcome up in Ontario? Yeah. Real treat to have them here. Uh, there are no accidents in this world. And uh, this young man met and fell in love with a young lady from just down the road where Caitlin and I grew up in Millbank. And so when we thought that we were living in a bluegrass desert, the Lord saw fit to set us a very fine five-string banjo player. And uh, not only is he a wonderful banjo player, he's a devoted father and husband, and I have the privilege of kind of walking in his shadow and being his friend and watching him lead his family. And it's a wonderful privilege and a gift to call him a friend and brother in the Lord. Uh, would you make Roger Martin feel welcome here tonight? He's going to share a song with you that he brought to the band. This is a classic from the late, great Rich Mullins called If I Stand. There's more that rises in the morning than the sun more that shines in the night than just the moon there's more than this fire here that keeps me warm and a shelter that is larger than this room and there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment and a music higher than the songs that i can sing stuff of earth competes for the allegiance I owe only to the giver of all good things. So if I stand, let me stand on the promise that you will pull me through. And if I can't, let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you. If I sing, let me sing for the joy that is born in me these songs. on the prairies than the wind and more that pulses in the ocean than the tide there's a love that's fiercer than the love between friends more gentle than a mother when a baby's at her side and there's a loyalty that's deeper than mere sentiment and a music higher than the songs that I can sing stuff of earth competes for the allegiance i owe only to the giver of all good things so if i stand let me stand on the promise that you will pull me through and if i can't let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you Sing, let me sing for the joy that is born in me these songs. And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his own. If I stand, let me stand on the promise that you will pull me through. And if I can't, let me fall on the grace that first brought me to you. If I sing, let me sing for the joy that is born in me these songs. And if I weep, let it be as a man who is longing for his own. As a man who is longing for his own. Yeah. 
It's Roger Martin. Swap a doodle. No. No? Oh, yeah. I should read. <laughs> we'll get this set list figured out yet, so? I promise. Okay. All right.
out in the darkness It moans and whispers through the pines Thank you so much. We're going to do a, a song off of our latest recording, a song I wrote called Coming Home. 
And uh, we all know, or I'm, I'm certain that we all know the story of the prodigal son. And if we're honest with ourselves, I'm sure that we have seen ourselves in that son. We've probably seen ourselves in the other son from time to time as well too, the one who wasn't so thrilled with his brother coming home. But most often I think we see ourselves in the one that runs away from the father and then returns with hope to be welcomed back. Um, and this is a song in that vein called Coming Home. I'm prone to wander. I have a sense of feeling restless. A heart that can be reckless. I know. And I'm born to hunt. For a food that will not nourish Leaves a person feeling worthless I know Renegade on the run Wayward daughters and prodigal sons Call me a vagabond Call me whatever you want, but I'm coming home. I'm in a strange place. Never thought I'd get so caught up. Never thought I lost it this much. Thank you so much. We're going to invite Dave up here and we're going to take a short break. Well, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Rescue. That was just terrific, right? Wow, you, you caught me off guard. I was waiting for that last song. But uh, that, that, was, that was it, eh? Oh, well, that's just great. Um, listen, uh, you, we're giving them a chance to kind of uh, sit, and you've been sitting a while. I've got a, just a couple of announcements to make. Why don't I give you a chance to stand up and, you know, stretch and fluff the pillows or whatever you want to do? 
And if you don't want to stand, that's fine. But I do have uh, some announcements I want to just share with you. Um, and then we'll receive our, um, our offering. Let's see. Um, well, announcement number one. Oh, some of you can't see me now, but that's okay. That's all right. Announcement number one, I should have said this earlier. You know, we have two uh, washrooms at the back, uh, private washrooms. One of them is uh, relatively newly installed, uh, a, a door, you push the buttons, and that's for anyone that uh, might come to the church that has wheelchair, and there's plenty of room in there, and they can just uh, kind of push a button, the door opens, and then once you get in, um, it will close. You push the button, close the door. And you got to push the button to open it again. But that's our, make sure, though, if you use that one, that the light is on first before you close the door. All right, that would be important. But, uh, but there's two washrooms back there. And then uh, if they're occupied and so on, we do have other washrooms down the stairs that are available as well. But um, just want to make that make mention to that. We have exit doors, too, in case anything should uh, happen that ought not to happen. Just go to the closest exit door, and uh, you can get out pretty, pretty quick. Well, those, those are uh, some of those now. So we have other things. Um, I want to remind you that um, in a few moments we'll take up an offering, but um, those envelopes, thank you so much for your support. And um, if you have not yet picked up your income tax receipt from last year's, for last year's donations, if you attended the Henley and supported that, they, they are available after over here on this side, uh, Jurgen, or maybe have one or two other people that are at that table and they have those income tax receipts available for you, okay? So that's a very important thing, so that you can pick up those um, income tax receipts. Uh, we also, as you know, um, there's pie and coffee available. Some of you got it before, and some of you got what well, can have it afterwards, and it's in the back there. It's available for you just out that door. By the uh, table where uh, Rescue Junction has their table of uh, products, and you want to make sure that you talk and say hello to them. We are, we are going to give away some things, too, that we always do at the end of the, uh, the concert. And um, the way that we do that is, if you were here before, you'll know that when you use your envelope, we'll just uh, pick up one of those names. And so please, <clears throat> please write clearly, all right? Especially if you're going to leave us um, your email address so that we can put you on the uh, email blast list. And uh, there's another option now. If you are not presently on the email blast list that we send that out, I don't know, two or three times before each concert, uh, if you're not on that, you want to be on that, you can go right to the church website and you can click on um, Henley, I guess, and you can actually type it right in there and then you automatically put yourself on to that list. So that's good to know. All right, so there we have that. Um, but we are going to be giving away some things uh, tonight, giveaways, and we'll be picking out names out of those, uh, those envelopes that you give for your offering. Uh, just to let you know what they are, uh, Rescue's given us three CDs that we'll be giving away those. We have shirts that are still available. Some, I, I just heard there's a lady, I don't know, it was last time we were together. She wanted, and she was a, quite a little lady, but she wanted an extra, extra, extra large shirt. She says they're great to be a night shirt, a night shirt. So if you want to buy an extra large size and wear it uh, when you go to bed and sleep, that's fine. You can they're they're multitask and multi-usable. All right. So anyway, we'll give away a couple of shirts tonight, and uh, we're going to give away um, a couple of these water bottles too. That they're available for sale, but uh, but we're going to give away two. A couple of them uh, tonight. And if, by the way, if you buy a shirt or you buy a water bottle, the, the shirt is $15, water bottle is 10 But if you buy one of those, we have what we call now a new-to-you table. So you might want to look at that new-to-you table um, because they're not new CDs. Well, I shouldn't say it. Some of them are brand new. still wrapped. And there's DVDs there that are still wrapped. But there's others that are not wrapped in the plastic. So if you don't mind getting a CD that has been listened to, we think, once or twice at the most. Um, if you buy a bottle or you, you buy a shirt, you can pick up any CD or any DVD you want. Or if you don't want to buy a bottle, you can have um, a CD or a DVD, uh, whatever, for $5 each. So I, I didn't say that very clearly last time. But take a look at the used or the new-to-you uh, table as well. 
And then we're going to give, Carescape Publishing is going to give away another book. So uh, this one's uh, safe in a hard place. And that's the one dealing with trusting and faith, having faith in difficult circumstances. There's three of them in the series, Faith, Hope, and Love. This one is the uh, faith one. And uh, so we'll be giving one of those away as well. So those are the, I think, let me just check. I think those are all the announcements. Income tax, yeah, new to you, yeah. Yeah, blast, okay. Night shirt, yeah, I did that. I think I did it all. Wow. Some of you falling asleep already? No. Nah. All right, we're going to ask the ushers uh, to come forward uh, right now, and um, we will receive our evening offering. Listen, thank you so much for your support. This started off being uh, kind of a, a test run, but if you received a brochure tonight, you'll know that Masters 4 is going to be here next month, and then uh, Vessels of Honor will be here the following month, and then if you turn on the back, you'll see that for the whole rest of 2023, practically, well, it's up to October, uh, we have a group listed. Some of you are saying, well, are you going to get any American groups? Well, you look in there, and there are some American groups coming up, I think beginning uh, either July or August or something, and we've got some uh, great uh, U.S. groups coming up as well. So uh, that's just for your information, and uh, thank you. The reason it's happening is because you're supporting uh, this ministry. So thank you so much. And again, reminder, make sure you pick up your receipts. Let's just pray for a minute, and then uh, we'll receive that offering. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the messages of the songs that we've been listening to. And uh, we do need rest. There are days when we need rest. Uh, we need you, Lord Jesus, every day, really. And we thank you for the blessings that you give, the provisions that you give to us. But we're also thankful, Lord Jesus, for the sustaining grace that when we go through days that are challenging and days maybe that are more difficult than what we expected, that uh, you do not leave us and you do not forsake us and you sustain us. So, Lord, we just thank you that we can come together like this as a Henley uh, family tonight and just celebrate the reality of knowing a Savior, knowing a Savior and a Lord and a coming King. And we anticipate all of eternity, Lord Jesus, being with you. And we rejoice in your willingness to die on the cross for us, that we might, through trusting your work on the cross, come to new life in you and be born from above, born of the Spirit, made brand new creatures. So, Lord, we just bless your name. Thank you for those gifts, Lord, that are going to be given tonight. Will you expand them and extend them so that the ministry can continue? And we will be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, and uh, Lori, thank you so much for playing beautiful <clears throat> on that organ. Um, some of you know that I'm uh, retired and, and older now, 
And um, <clears throat> I remember something that a teacher said to me when I turned 35. Teachers have a way of saying things, don't they? And um, I turned 35, and of course, you look at Scripture and it says, you know, three score year and ten. I wasn't real good in math, but I knew that at 35 years of age, I'm halfway there to 70. Now I'm 71. But anyway, what she said to me, she said, well, Pastor, she said, um, <clears throat> now that you're 35, let me tell you something. From now on, it's going to be so much more easier because it'll be downhill all the way. That's what she said. Well, you know, I, uh, I never forgot that, as you can tell. But uh, I, I've also discovered that downhill isn't always easier. Downhill is not always easier. And I was, um, my, I'm doing a lot more reading now that I'm retired, and I was going through a second time through Scripture just for me and reading, and I'm starting over again in Genesis, and I was, I'm seeing things that I've never seen before. It's, it's really quite miraculous and amazing. But um, I, really, and I was reading Genesis uh, 41, the story of um, the Old Testament Joseph. You know that story. We know the story so well, but when he was even a young man, he had uh, for two years, we can at least say for two years, there was, a, you know, downhill. It just one thing led to another, to another, to another. And it all started out at home. Remember when he was supposed to told by dad, go up and find your brothers. They're out feeding the sheep. And Joseph went. And they hated Joseph. His brothers hated Joseph. And they conspired to try to get rid of this Joseph that was favored by dad. And it's scripture repeats it. They hated him. And you know the story. They were going to initially kill him. But Reuben says, no, let's just throw him in the pit. And uh, Reuben, really, the firstborn, he, he was going to try to save Joseph. But anyway, it's... That was kind of the first real obvious downhill experience, to be hated by your brothers, to be hated by a family member, let alone all these other brothers that he had. So much so they wanted to kill him. Uh, of course, you know the story well enough to know that he wound up not being killed, but ultimately being sold as a slave to the Ishmaelites. They sold him for money. <laughs> They didn't want blood on their hands. They just want to make a profit from their brothers and from his departure, and they'd never see him again. So the second kind of shot in the dark and going downhill would be that he became a slave, and he was sold to Potiphar, and it didn't get any better either because if you remember the story well, you'll remember that he was framed. He was seduced and framed by Potiphar's wife, falsely put in prison. And then from there, he was there for two years in prison. And if you remember, there was a couple of, there was a cupbearer and a baker and so on. They had, anyway, they, Joseph told them their dreams and sure enough, one of them was executed according to the dreams meaning and the cupbearer was not. He was made reinstated by the pharaoh, and, but, but the cupbearer forgot him. And for two years, you know, I, 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 that's Joseph, and he was just a young man, but I wondered when I was reading that, I wonder if Joseph ever, in those two years he was sitting away in that prison, that cell, that dungeon, whether he ever wondered, God, why, why is this happening to me? Why am I hated by my brothers? Why have I been sold? Why have I been falsely accused of rape? Why have I been put in prison? Why has that cupbearer not said anything? 
Well, of course, you and I have the benefit of reading the rest of that chapter 41 of Genesis. It's a long chapter. I think there's 56 or 7 verses in it. And we know what happened. We know that Joseph finally winds up being in charge of all of Egypt because he also interprets a dream that Pharaoh had. And finally the cupbearer, oh, yep, I forgot about him, you know. But I wonder if Joseph ever had days because he didn't know the rest of chapter 41 of Genesis, the way you and I can read it, if he ever wondered, why God? Are you allowing this? Another thing I'm doing while I'm retired, I have a very fascinating, I, I, I knew the story of, of Joseph, but I didn't know the story of Doug Herman. Doug Herman, anybody know Doug Herman? Doug Herman. No, I didn't know him either. But I found out a little bit about something about Doug Herman. This morning in my devotional reading, it's a very fascinating little book I picked up. It's a devotional book. It talks about, um, well, church history people. You know, like Charles Spurgeon and John Newton and all his people that really, oh, man, God really used, you know. But I'd never heard about Doug Herman. But February 19th, that's today, I'm supposed to read about that. So this is easy. I'm just going to read this to you. Then we'll be basically done. So you, you're going to read my devotions that I had this morning, if that's all right with you. You're going to leave. It's only a page or two or five or ten. No, it's not that long. Listen to this. Those best qualified to teach us about suffering and hope are those who have walked through the shadows of tragedy and emerged stronger on the other side. Talking about a downhill. Here we go. Doug Herman is one such person. This is his story. In a two-month period, not two years, in a two-month period of my life, my life and faith, my faith came to a crashing climax. Yvonne, my wife, was going to die. My infant daughter, Ashley, was an AIDS baby, just six months of age. My grandfather, a wonderful Christian man, died of liver cancer. Then we found out that my youngest brother, Dan, had acute myeloplastic leukemia. I had had enough. God was supposed to be my refuge and hiding place. I was a minister. I had given him my life. Doug and Yvonne Herman were high school sweethearts before their marriage in 1981. They had both loved the Lord since childhood and followed his calling into ministry together. The Hermans were thrilled at the birth of their first child, Joshua, on February 19, 1985. In the hospital, as Doug wondered at the miracle of the new life in his arms, Two units of blood dripped slowly into Yvonne's vein to replace the blood lost during the delivery. Eighteen months later, they were shattered by the news that the blood had been contaminated with HIV. When the HIV tests came back, Doug's and Joshua tests were negative, but Yvonne's was positive. They had a second baby, Ashley was also found to be positive. Doug was tortured by the question, where was God during the blood transfusion that would eventually kill my wife? Doug and Yvonne battled both physically and spiritually these assaults. All the while, our faith was torn between the God of love we had known all of our lives and the God who seemed so unconcerned. Instead of standing firm, our faith quaked. Have you ever had 
faith that quakes. Doug pleaded with God for answers, but God was silent. Fearing AIDS, Doug's church did not renew his pastoral call. A few months later, two-year-old Ashley died in Doug's arms. Yvonne was too sick to be at her daughter's deathbed. Nine, month later, nine months later, in September of 1991, came the moment that Doug had dreaded. The doctor gently told him the choice for your wife was either two days of suffering hooked up to a machine, and then death, or two hours of suffering and death. As Doug sat before the doctor with tears streaming down his face, a voice flashed through his mind. Yvonne has fought the good fight of faith. She has run her race in life. There is now laid up for her a crown of righteousness. Doug turned to the doctor, let my wife go home. I don't want her to suffer any longer. As Doug sat by Yvonne's side, weeping, a single tear trickled down her cheek. Then she, then she was gone, and Doug Herman became a bewildered, grieving, single parent. One day, Doug took six-year-old Joshua to the pediatrician, the pedi pediatrician, sorry, the pediatrician's office for an inocul inoculation. I'm not sick, Daddy, Josh protested. Please, Daddy, I don't want a shot. It's going to be all right, Doug assured him, holding his son on the exam table. When they stuck him with the needle, Josh looked straight at me, looking deep into my eyes as I firmly held his head. He cried, Daddy. It was only one word, but his, his look said a million words. Daddy, why the pain? Why are you letting them hurt me? It's not my fault. Why, Daddy? I thought you loved me. Well, my eyes burned with tears as my mind suddenly raced to the familiar phrases I had uttered months before. Why, God? I thought you were my father. Why, Daddy, why? Very clearly, God spoke to my heart. In that moment, he simply said, it's the same with you and me. God has no desire to see his children suffer, but if this temporal suffering provides a greater blessing, whether we understand it or not, he will allow it. He sees what we cannot. You know, I, I thought of that last phrase, um, we're coming close to uh, summer, and they've done a lot of fixing down at Port, uh, Port de Luzi on the, on the wharf. Beautiful. It's just beautiful. And they put um, benches down along the sidewalk there where uh, people used to always bring their lawn chairs. Remember? Maybe some of you have done it. We have. Bring the lawn chairs down to port in the evening and watch, watch the sunset. Absolutely gorgeous over the water. Now, people can sit there, and then after the sun goes down, it's getting dark and shadowy and pick up the chairs, and away they go. The Bible calls people sheep. Somebody said it this way. Sheep usually have their heads down, nibbling at the grass. And that's all they see. They just see the food and nibbling away. Sheep need a, a, a shepherd that protects and provides for them. Sometimes that shepherd needs to pick them up. And he needs them to see not just the nibbling down here, but they need to see what he sees. There's an old song that says, Beyond the Sunset. And we can't see yet beyond the sunset, but Jesus does. Oh, he sees so much better than we do. And when those tragedies come, and those questions are there, why God, why, why, why? Those are the time that you can be assured there's a loving Savior who picks you up. 
Where was God when that happened and that happened? Where was God when that happened? Well, God never ever promised a life down here that would be free from pain and problems. But he did promise, he did promise that wherever his children are, he would never leave them or forsake them and that they could be assured of his presence and his peace in all the circumstances. That, and friends, that's a tremendous thing. Because God never, as I said before, I think last time we were together, God never ever promised tomorrow. But he did promise forever. He did promise that. And this life is so short, isn't it? Oh, my. My, it's short. Now I'm old. Gracious, where'd it go? Got more years behind me than I have the, the other way. Oh, but I know a Savior. I know a Savior. And that's how we, we come together like this and celebrate his goodness to us. We sing, have this music play. Do you know the Savior? Do you know him personally? Is he your good shepherd? Because life is hard, and it is downhill. <laughs> it's, uh, if you haven't experienced it yet, don't worry, you will. You will. Well, Lord bless you. We're going to have a uh, rescue jump. You can come on back. We've got 15 minutes left. It's about right on time, guys. And uh, it's so good to have you there, isn't it? Aren't they great? Rescue Junction all the way from uh, Millbank. Millbank. Can anything good come out of Millbank? Of course. Look at it. Lord bless you. Give them one more big hand of prize. And uh, that's, yeah, okay. Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the hills, the tunnels, never falter, never fail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in God's praise, in God's praise forevermore. As you roll across the trussel, Spanning Jordan, swelling tide, you'll behold the Union Depot into which your train will glide. There you'll meet the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son. With his hand outstretched, he'll greet you, weary pilgrim, welcome home. Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in God's praise, in God's praise forevermore. Where the angels wait to join us in God's praise. What if we do a banjo tune? Yeah, that's right. a good idea.
Where's Jim? Jim and Sally and Neil, they're super fans. They drove here tonight from London, and they're some of the best friends we have. And I'm going to pay you back by letting you name a request if you got one. By the mark. I knew it. Yes, I sir. Knew it. Neil, what's your request? Evidence. Well, neither of those are on our set list. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do them both. Instead? No. Too uh, sharp, yeah? Hope you folks are comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. These ones are for free.
took what wasn't mine And now I'll pay the price I carry on my back My just reward And yet my mind is on The man who's done no wrong And I've heard others whisper He's the Lord Now here together we Will die on Calvary A sinner and the perfect Lamb of God Savior, remember me I beg him as our bodies bleed And even at the end He saves the lost I think Dave did mention our CD table. Please definitely stop by and see us. This next song is the title track from our latest album called Lions at Heart. And uh, how many of you have a record player? You can play vinyl? Perfect. Come back and buy all the vinyl records we pressed. That would be amazing. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. But, but you know, if you wanted to, they're there. And we're oh. running a special tonight. Um, Let's make the CDs. This is the St. Catherine special. Yes. All right. You tell CDs them. CDs for ten dollars a piece. Any two for twenty. Any three for thirty. <laughs> and you can go home with a smile and a handshake. So Perfect. sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good to me. That All, right. Pretty good. All right. That's All right. what you call a Mennonite bargain. <laughs>
thank you so much. Thank you again for choosing to come and spend your evening with us. We hope and trust that you have left feeling encouraged, maybe feeling challenged, but I hope most of all that you leave feeling welcomed into the presence of the Creator God who loves you and who came to die in your place. If we've done that, we've done our job here tonight, and we want to say thank you to Dave for the invitation to come and be a part of this program. We love it down here. We wish God's blessing on you as you go from here. And uh, this closing song is a benediction of sorts. It's called The End of That Road. tired and my feet seem lost more hand for Roger Martin. Yeah. That's Dallas Rote behind me on the bass, Nicholas Huber.
Thank you so much. God bless you. That's you. Rescue, rescue Junction. What a treat. What a treat. Great group. Thank you, friends.